previously on Twitchy's Kerbal Space Program. Damn it, Jeb! I don't care if you're some sort of maverick, hotshot, badass pilot. You need a science officer this mission, and you know it. Five, four, three, two. Damn it! We're stuck on the moon. Rescue ship! I, Rich Mill Kerman, will save you. I will fly planes to make money to upgrade the research and development center. And now, the thrilling conclusion. Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Whoa! Bloody intro that was, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, we join Rich Mel Kerman as he is flying over the polar ice caps because, well, we're out to earn some more money for doing the uh, visual surveys of the other side of Kerman. You've, uh, hopefully, as the intro reminded you, we had did the close surveys last time. Uh, that earned us a fair bit of money, but this time we need more money because we are about four-fifths of the way, I think, into doing... Um, and to getting the money by four fifths, we need five hundred thousand, and we've got four hundred thousand. So this mission should do us. Now I'm kind of lining up on the advanced navigation markers here. If you right-click the markers on your map, you you get a little. Uh, do you want to have an advanced navigation marker on here? And I go yes, and then I mark up my retrograde, my prograde. Sorry, not retrograde, my prograde marker over the top of that, and then just kind of watch the ship for a bit because space planes well it's not even a space plane but planes they're they are long there is long atmospheric flight and it just kind of you know you need to pass the time so what we are going to do is use the beauty of our editing software to jump forward to all the interesting bits like that was just us catching the first command report uh because well you know that that's what we need to do in this area and i'm going to take a moment to explain how i deal with it now that we're in amongst the cluster of all the uh all the points uh basically i get my crew report i then swing round to find the next navigation marker you do have to set that on your map quick though and then i go up at something like a 45 degree angle to give myself this beautiful ballistic arc that heads over towards Towards the point that I'm heading for when it gets there I pretty much kill all my engines I, I don't actually but I start following my retrograde to, to give the engines less oomph along the, the mark if you will and then when we enter again hit another one and once again turn round hard to find my next marker get myself up to the highest atmosphere layer possible with the, the engines that we're using skim across the top in hopefully something approaching a ballistic arc and then come back down on the other side to collect the, uh, the the crew report. Now, the plan here was to have Richmond now fly on to the fourth point of this uh, survey mission and collect all the EVA data. Unfortunately, out over the ocean here, you'll notice that my liquid fuel has run dry. So we now have to make an emergency glide to land and stop because landing gear are much nicer things to try and land on than water is. And also uh, the thing to pay attention to here is how la how hilly that land is in front of us now i was just quickly checking my map to see if we could actually fly all the way along the coastline or at least glide all the way along the coastline but looking at our rate of descent here no no we can't so i'm just going to kind of skim around everywhere and then pop out my my parachutes because i'd actually forgotten that i had those up until that last moment but that, that's all good with this last um last little run round and make sure the ship is doing all right try and like stand on the side and get this 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 thing level again no it's no good so what we're gonna have to do is just recover the vessel as it is uh even pushing it doesn't doesn't quite help unfortunately all that does is uh give rich Mill a bit of a headache and yeah we're gonna we're gonna recover this and take it back and then we're gonna have to send out another flight to come and get this eva um data so for reasons of brevity and ridiculousness we have taken the spent ostrich and strapped two solid boosters onto the side of it now these are obviously the biggest solid boosters we can get they are uh, they have decouplers in between and we have cut back their thrust limiters as almost as far as it will possibly go and still lift this craft because we want maximum burn time because this craft will lift itself on its wing i've decided that what we want to do is send this off um, first up to the higher layers of the atmosphere so we're going to go straight up for a little while at least up till uh, 10 kilometers or so and then we're going to perform what can only really be called a gravity turn but uh, much much shallower so we're trying to build up as much forward velocity as possible obviously this is all in aid of trying to make this mission as quick as possible because as i have explained multiple times in the past now aircraft they're long they take forever 
but th this was quite a good thing. If I had actually angled up a little way, I reckon we could have got ourselves into a suborbital um, situation where Richmal would have earned some more pilot points, which could have been nice, but unfortunately I didn't do that. I wasn't trying to go to space. We were just trying to go forward as far as possible. I don't know if we would have got more distance with a suborbital flight than going through the atmosphere, because obviously the atmosphere provides drag and going through suborbital, you keep all your speed, at least whilst you're out of the top of the atmosphere. But either way, we make it to a maximum of 42 kilometers here and we come back down into the atmosphere to perform the same mission all over again of literally just flying over the top of the um, polar ice cap here, going to the other side, making a nice gentle touchdown landing, or at least that was the plan, before rolling around on my landing gear, trying to find the point where we're supposed to be to get this um, EVA report. It turns out it was just over the hill, but yeah, uh, I had to spend a lot of time just kind of rolling around, moving left and right, trying to identify this last place and doing our EVA, EVA data. Survey complete, mission done, everyone recovered and got back. Um, one thing I would like to know, well first, look at the money up top. That is exactly what we wanted, we got enough to upgrade that, brilliant. And the other thing I wanted to know, I had some fuel left in that craft. Do you think it would have been better to fly back as far as I can and get the percent bonus or to trade in the fuel? Anyway, you, we find ourselves back up on the moon and for some reason the um, uh, Kerbal Attachment System fuel line has not been attached or has unlinked itself. I'm not sure what happened there, whether it's something to do with uh, like leaving the game and coming back or maybe a reload somewhere had, had un undone it. I don't, I don't know, but either way, we got Bill out. No, we got Bob out and we um, connect, reconnected all the, the vessels together and then uh, finally amazingly we are able to refuel our ship this is what everything in the past two two missions have been about uh, past two episodes have been about getting this fuel pump working again so we get jeb out and we uh, disconnect obviously getting jeb out turn the sas off i should have known that should have used bob um but that's okay we do a little bit of break dancing on the floor and uh, you know no one break dances quite like a vessel on the moon break dances. It's, it's really something to, to, to behold. Um, and eventually I remember that, hey, landing gear in and out are actually the way to do this here. So I, I retract my landing gear, point ourselves up, put the landing gear back up, fire off the SAS and try and find Kerbin because I know Kerbin is off to the, uh, the east of the moon or the, uh, our current landing spot on the moon should really be what I'm saying. Uh, unfortunately it is over the lip of the crater so I have to forget that plan and just go east and then with the smallest pup upwards we push ourselves up into uh, you know a, a small suborbital um, situation and then forward thrust forwards with everything we've got as soon as we reach somewhere near apple apps i was trying to do like practice now nice uh, high efficiency burns here but once again you know i am just showing my ineptitude by going past the apple apps that then gives us a situation where we're not chasing about apple apps we're trying to get our apple apps to chase us uh, and that that means you're bringing it down off of the, the the height that it's at and you know all sorts of things go hideously wrong when you go over apple apps so remember guys if you're going for a high efficiency burn don't go past your apple apps start it just beforehand and then we just have the relatively simple task of performing a burn to get us back to Kerbin. now for those of you that don't know what that is i will tell you right now so what you need to do is make sure that your ejection angle is um going completely retrograde to the orbit of the moon by that i mean if you look at the circle the moon is making it travels to the right on that circle and i want to make sure i am leaving the line to the left so that when i'm so basically I'm trying to slow myself down from the moon's orbit because obviously the moon stays where it is because it's going at a certain speed and if we slow ourselves down relative to Kerbin or relative to the moon and Kerbin we should fall, up, fall back down because the only thing holding us up there is the speed. That's the theory. And as it turns out, I did I did all right. I was a little bit off, uh, uh, you know, less than a million kilometres. I, I call that a little bit off. Um, uh, it's quite easy just to put point retrograde with a little bit of i think it's anti-radial i was going for here just to try and bring it down lower and then i'm like hmm now this vessel only has two parachutes and quite a lot of stuff on it of course this leaves open the situation where if any litho breaking is indeed needed we're going to end up blowing up stuff which unfortunately means the first thing that's going to go is bob which it's not great, it's not great at all. But anyway, we're gonna get Bob out, and because Bob is the jolly good scientist that he is, and he realizes Jebediah's capsule is at the top, 
Um, he's going to go around and collect all the scientific data from from everywhere that he can, and then go and deposit it into Jeb's capsule because that is the one that is most likely to survive. And you know, we we need that science data. We really do. And 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 Bob realizes that this this mission is more important than the value of any single Kerbal's life, even if the person that they are prioritizing is Jebediah. As, as horrible as that sounds that, that really does sound horrible anyway we do a small amount of time warping because you know it takes some time to get to the moon and back and and flying around just in deep space it's all right but it's not something i want to try and talk to talk to you about all over the the thing now i've got some um, atmospheric time acceleration some physics warp time acceleration on the go and when i tried to spin there it nearly spun some bits off the side of my ship so i had to remember to, to slow ourselves down and uh, get back into watching this re-entry scene because wow fire and and speed and just shedding everything everywhere i kind of wish i was watching the map view here because I, I quite like watching the aerobrake maneuver take its effect on apple app apple apps sorry to to get the word right um but i also quite like in just watching the vehicle go through this um that i am a little bit gutted that we're on the night side but when you're returning from the moon you, you don't really have that much choice um may, maybe if i thought about it incredibly well we could have made some sort of aero brake maneuver where we would come out the other side and then um hopefully spin round enough to come back uh, to the kerbal space center maybe in the more advanced missions later on in in our program we will be doing that but as it stands as this is the first return let's not remember that let's not forget that guys this is a historic first for our space program two kerbals coming back from the moon the whole of kerbal kind are going absolutely nuts here and uh, it's time to pop up our, our parachutes wait for these guys just to slowly drift down again i would have waited a little bit longer to to open the parachutes normally because i'm the person that i am but we've got lots of stuff to try and save here and there we go perfect touchdown what what more could we want uh okay so we're going to recover this and yeah let's let's have a round of applause for the guys here guys guys yay all this science like 170 science back that's just unbelievable We've got all our data and so many points for our things leaving me to say thank you very much for joining us for this adventure guys i will see you next time when we're going to spend all the science